Vic Teeny Gamer here, and as I promised, I am going to be summoning on the Hutao Banner. Let's go! So, yeah. Um, I'm also going to be summoning for Toma as well, because I need to complete my four-star collection. And, uh, yeah, a new character and all and stuff. But the reason why I'm summoning for Hu Tao, I'm pretty sure I mentioned this before, but for those of you who don't know, I have her C0, and I need her C1. So we're going to be summoning for a copy of C1 Hu Tao. So, yeah. So my pity right now is... 67. I'm at 67 pity with a 50-50. And I hope, I hope to Barbados, hope to Morax, hope to Ball, hope to the gods of Tavat that I will get Hu Tao uh, and win the 50-50. So anyways, without any further ado, let's get started, shall we? So, this is going to bump up my pity to 77. Since my pity is already at 67. Dang! First multi! What? First multi? No way. No way we get Hu Tao. If we don't get Hu Tao, I hope I get uh, Chi Chi or Mona. Because I don't have them. But if it's Hu Tao, I could skip the banner. Well, actually, I can't because I need Toma, so yeah. Hopefully, it's Hu Tao. Sayu, okay, not Toma, but alright. Let's go! C1! Woo! C1 Hu Tao! Yeah! But we aren't. Sadly, we aren't done with the banner yet because we need to get Toma. At least one copy of him. Uh, it'll be cool if we get more copies of Hu Tao, honestly. But yeah, dang, that's that's really lucky. I got it on first 10, but to be fair, my pity was like around 70 anyway. So yeah, but anyways, let's count and see what our pity is at now. So that's one. So we are at one pity with a 50-50 chance of Hu Tao. So we got her C1, that is pretty cool, but we are not done yet because we need our boy Toma. So here we go. Let's go with the other stack of 10. This is going to bump up our pity to 11. Please, Toma, come home so that I could skip the banner. Also, I'm also hunting for a couple of 4-star weapons. Um, and a couple of three-star ones. So hopefully I can get those. Okay, more Sayu copies. I'll take that. Harbingers. I need Harbingers of Dawn. Flutes. Don't really need flutes. Alright, we got Sayu. More copies of Sayu is fine. What I don't want is Diona. <laughs> Please, game, don't give me a Diona copy. So this is gonna bump up our pity to 21. We need Toma, bro. We need Toma. So here we go. 21! Toma, come home! Alright, Cold Steel. Slingshot. Alright, just a bunch of useless three-star weapons. Let's go! We can skip the banner! Yeah! We can save for other future banners! Let's go! We got Toma... On 30 pulls. Pretty cool. Alright, let's see what else we get. Okay, that's gonna get us to R4 Harbinger. We need more Harbinger uh, copies anyway. But there we go! Let's go! This is actually one of our uh, luckiest summons. We, we only barely spent 30 Fate summons. And... Uh, we got Toma on the 30th, and we got Hu Tao on the first multi that we done. I I've been, like, um, 
building up pity for the Kokomi banner, but sadly I didn't get Kokomi, which is why um, my pity was at a 67 for the uh, event summons. But yeah, I'm pretty satisfied with what I got. So here we go! We got the most broken constellation in the game! Besides, uh, besides, you know, Ganyu's, but... There we go! C1! I could spam charge attack for infinity! So, uh, I'll showcase it right now. Look at this! Look at this! No stamina consumption! Pretty cool, huh? Yeah, so good. It's so good. <laughs> but, as always, uh, with these videos, I'm gonna be doing, well, the test runs, obviously. And then give my honest review and uh, criticism on these characters. So, I'm gonna explain why they're good and how they're good. Honestly, everyone is good anyway, so, yeah. Uh, what, what's the point in me uh, talking about? Uh, <laughs> the specifics of characters anyways. That's what character um, overviews are for. Or character reviews. So yeah. But anyways, before we start that, we're gonna be looking at Toma right here. Or we're gonna be feeding our constellations and we got the new character here, which is Toma. Obviously we need to click on all of these so that uh, we don't get the exclamation point. So, uh, yeah. Uh, honestly, for Toma, um... Actually, no, I'll just explain that, uh, portion, because I was about to explain what artifacts you need to give them. I'll just explain that portion in the, uh, test runs. But, uh, yeah. Uh, let's level them up real quick, because we have the, um, we have the wits to level them up anyway. So might as well level it up. And get that free um, fate from him. Really? And there we go. We got a free acquainted fate. And we're going to use that to summon. So my pity uh, at the moment for permanent is one. Because the <laughs> the five star I got was a five star pull arm. It was this one. Basically. I forgot what the... Um, weapon is called. Uh, I could pull it up right now, actually. It is a pull arm weapon. It's pretty good on supports, but honestly, none of my characters fit that role anyway. But yeah, it's a Skyward Spine. It's a pretty good five star weapon because it. Is, I mean, I mean to be real, it's a five star weapon. Anything is better than a four star weapon. But some four star weapons are really good, like Death Match, the Catch. Um, Dragon Spain is also a pretty good one, and also the um, Black Cliff pull arm as well. So, yeah, uh, my pull arm characters don't really need the Skyward Spine because, well, Hu Tao needs the Staff of Homa. Uh, Raiden needs her Engulfing Lightning. Zhang Li either needs the Death Match or the Black Tassel. And Zhang Ling's best pull arm currently is the catch. So, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I don't have a use for the pull arm. So, maybe some future pull arm user would use it. Maybe Zhao, but um, honestly, the Jade the jade Lance is better for Zhao anyway. So, uh, yeah. And I almost forgot. We need to give Sayu her constellations. So this will make her C3. Pulled her twice. Pretty good. We didn't get any Diona dupes because guess what? My Diona is C6. <laughs> so there we go. I'm pretty sure I have an exclamation point. So I am probably missing something. Yeah, her uh, Thomas voiceover. Oh yeah. And this too. Uh, I just hate having the exclamation point um, notifications anyway. So yeah. But anyways, to extend the runtime, uh, <laughs> I'll be doing the test runs for each character. So we're going to be starting... Actually, we always start from first to last. So let's start from last to first. 
So, we're going to try out Sayu first. So, Sayu is a pretty good... Um, Sayu is a pretty good... Um, what should I call it? Pretty good animal support. Um, she scales off of elemental uh, mastery. And with her C1, she basically becomes a hybrid of a healer and a animal support. So she is extremely good in certain scenarios. Her E is also uh, the fastest movement speed in the game. Um, I, I did make a video on that. Uh, shameless plugin. But um, basically, uh, it's her fastest movement option in the game, or the fastest movement option in the game. So if you want a quick, if you want a quick way to move around um, the map, then Sayu's for you. So yeah, uh, so Sayu is a pretty good animal support. If you have her C1, you're all set. It's like how um, you need Bennett C1 to be all set. So yeah, honestly, the recommended build for her is a animal support with the four-piece viridescent set. So yeah, uh, that is basically Sayu. And next we have Diona. Honestly, pretty good support. Um, I see more people using her now. Um, instead of like characters like Jean or um, Chi Chi, because Diona has a shield uh, when you use her E. So not only you get the shield, but you get healing as well, because Diona is a, a support, a cryo support. But some people made her a cryo DPS, which is uh, honestly props to them for making her a DPS. Because honestly, this character's kit does not fit a DPS build whatsoever. <laughs> but anyways, so Diona, um, her mainly um, her use is to put up a shield, use her Q, and then swap it out with another DPS. Um, that is basically her primary role is a cryo support. So, uh, what usually people build her with is um, either the four-piece maiden set or the four-piece um, noblesse. And honestly, I would say noblesse because um, Diona heals off of base HP anyway. So you could probably compensate for energy recharge with bows, artifacts, and then you can uh, prioritize on HP base stat. Or HP, not HP base stat, but HP substat um, rolls for her artifacts. So yeah, pretty good. Cryo support fits in many cryo comps and many melt comps too. She is pretty much a good support. Alright, so that is Diona done. And now we have Toma, the new character. So Toma is a pyro support, but you can make him a pyro DPS. Um, it's what I said for like mostly every single person. But Toma can work both ways. So Toma's main use is to become a pyro support, and his main use is to put up a shield. So you use his Q, and then you swap out to another person, and then, you know, you deal uh, pyro damage. He's honestly mostly used in pyro, um, double pyro comps, uh, mainly for his shield and his pyro damage support. Like, as you can see here, um, he's doing pretty good damage. His shield also pretty la lasts for a pretty long time, too. But as long as his shield is up, you're going to be doing a ton of pyro damage, as well as um, having a shield to protect you. So it's like uh, Zhongli shield... Or it's like Diona's shield, uh, basically. Alright. Should be done. And there we go. That is Toma. Pyro support. But we're going to continue the challenge and see his kit right here. This is Mihoyo's build, by the way. So, yeah. So, uh, as you can see for the weapon, it's Favonius Lance. Honestly, pretty good lance for him. Because you want the shield as fast as possible anyway. Because his main role is to put up the Q, which is his pyro shield. His artifact set is Noblesse. Honestly, pretty good. Um, Noblesse might be the best set on him. Uh, you might 
even do Millilith or, um, you can either Millilith or, uh, the Oblead, which is the, um, I'm pretty sure I pronounced it wrong, but it's the artifact that increases your shield, um, your shield defense by 35%. Um, and then increase your damage if you're protected by a shield. So if you're building a DPS Toma, then that is a good um, build. But honestly, no Bleece is a pretty good um, artifact set for him if you are running him as a support. Because you're going to be doing a lot of damage anyway. So here is Talents. I think he strikes... Oh yeah, he strikes four times. His E... Um, when he does his E, he basically makes a pyro shield for himself, and you do pyro damage anyway. And when a blazing barrier is obtained, um, the remaining damage absorption will be a blazing barrier. So if he uses Q, which um, puts out the barrier, you can use his E and then it does more pyro damage. So there you go. But yeah, his Q um, creates a shield, absorbs pyro damage... Um, his Q does AoE pyro damage. He's basically just a pyro support. Um, but if you are going to make him a pyro DPS, uh, first you would use his Q and then you would use his E to do more uh, maximum amount of damage. So when your character... Okay, so this is his uh, passive. When your active character obtains or refreshes a blazing barrier, it's already described here. It's basically his Q. Um... Its shield strength will be increased by 5%, so you're just going to be tanking more. And then, um, during his Q, he gets a increase of uh, damage dealt based on his max HP. So, let's see what his artifact build is. Yeah, the, I think Mihoyo prioritized on its max HP. So... Toma's shield is based off his max HP, basically. So you would want to build Toma with HP main stat. Um, and maybe put Pyro damage on the side too. So, honestly, a good build for him might be Energy Recharge, Pyro damage, if you care about um, Pyro damage, like, on Toma's uh, shields. And then HP percent. Or, if you want to maximize shield, you could do HP, 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 or energy recharge if you think that um, you need more energy recharge, HP, and HP percent. So, Toma is pretty good at um, his job at uh, shielding, uh, <laughs> basically shielding everyone. So yeah, so his first thing is it just decreases cooldowns on both his E and Q when protected by a barrier. Um, his Q basically lasts for 3 seconds. This increases his E. Um, after using that, um, after using his Q, energy gets restored anyway, so that basically mitigates the energy recharge required for his Q. And his Q cost is 80, which is pretty high, so honestly, um, pretty good constellation to have. Um, so he could pop Qs consistently. That increases his Qs level. And when the Blazing Barrier is obtained uh, or refreshed, the damage dealt by all party members, normal charge or punch, is increased by 15%. So if you want the max amount of effect and support from Toma, you would need C6, which increases everyone's um, damage by 15%. So if you combine Toma with, uh, say, Ganyu, or Toma with Hu Tao. Or Toma with Zhao. Uh, they would do more damage. So yeah, honestly, if you have him C6, you can pop him in any team you want. And he works well. But the only downside is that he can't heal. So it's either choose him or Bennett. Well, honestly, people would choose Bennett anyway. Which is kind of sad. But yeah, he can fit the role of a Pyro support pretty well. So that is Toma. And that is basically uh, my recommendations for him. And yeah, my pr personal review. So I say he's pretty good. And here we go, Hu Tao. Do I really need to talk about her? Honestly, I've been... Um... <laughs> I've been praising her. For way too much, Tom. 
Hu Tao is just too good. Honestly, like, look at this damage. 33% on charge attack. Like, what's even to talk about? She's broken. Um, I call her the second best DPS in the game because Ganyu is number one. Um, Hu Tao, um, honestly can be built any in any way, shape, or form. You can build her with, um, Witch and Melolith. Um, so that you can have HP and Pyro damage, which is the build I have on her right now. Um, you can build her with a four-piece, um, witch set, even though, um, it, even though her E doesn't proc again, and basically, um, the effect will only proc once, which is pretty bad for witches, because, let's take a look. So D Luke right here has the four piece Witch of Flames. So when you use an elemental skill, it increases the two pieces effect by 50%. So basically, you're going to be doing more pyro damage, and it stacks to three times, and it's um, it has a 10 second cooldown, basic or like it has a 10 second duration for each E you cast, and it stacks too. So yeah, so which fits D Luke because D Luke's E can hit three times. While Hu Tao, when she uses her E, only does it once, and it lasts for, what, 16 seconds? Or it lasts for 9 seconds, but, like, her cooldown is 16 seconds, so you're only gonna get a max of 30% Pyral damage, so, yeah, it's pretty, pretty bad. Which is why I got Pyral damage bonus and HP percent, so she could do more consistent damage. But honestly, um, four piece witch is good on her. Um, if you want the maximum amount of damage, because it increases um, overload and burning damage by forty percent, and increases uh, reactions of vaporize and melt by fifty percent. So if you're using her for reactions, like the famous Hu Tao Xing Cho combo, it's a pretty good, um, pretty good artifact set on her. But I have pyro damage HP percent. Um, for basically uh, consistency, which is why here she has 40, um, 40,000 HP and 2,000 attack because of her HP. And when I use her E, which is, I'll do it right now. Use her E, bam, 4,000 attack, almost to the 5Ks. And her power damage is already at 94%, so honestly she's going to be doing even more power damage. And her crit rate, crit damage ratio is also pretty good too. So honestly, um, yeah, uh, this set in my opinion is better. But you can also do Witch's set, which is fine too. But uh, if you somehow don't have four piece Witch's set or four piece or two piece Pyro and HP, you can do Noblesse. So Pyro damage, Noblesse, two piece of each is also pretty good too. But anyways, that is basically the video. Uh, let me claim Hu Tao right here. <laughs> and, oh crap, I think I didn't do the single summon on this. But yeah, I'm just going to be doing the single summon and um, calling it, um, calling the video off. So here we go, let's do the single. Probably something pretty bad anyway. Yep. So yeah, that is, uh, that's it for the summons, and that is it for the uh, video, basically. So, uh, yeah. Uh, glad I got C1 Hu Tao. Um, really wanted to do that. And now I can finally attempt Spiral Abyss, because I've been waiting for the Hu Tao C1. And I got her, and I also got Toma on the 30th pull, which is also pretty good, too. So, uh, yeah, if you guys enjoyed this summoning video... Like the video and subscribe to the channel. Also, turn on the notification bell so you don't miss an upload as well. Um, I do a video once a week, or at least try to do a video once a week. So if you like Genshin content and all that stuff, sub and leave a like. And do all that YouTube stuff. Turn on the bell. And also leave a comment down below. How lucky did you get on your Hutao summons? And uh, anyways... Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video.